retiring in the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia, the right move for you. It's Kristen and Hannah again. Today we'll explore the factors that retirees consider when deciding whether this scenic region is the right fit for their golden years. West Virginia has been named by a few sources lately as one of the best places to retire. It was the third best state overall on a 2023 study from Bankrate and number one in affordability. Deciding where to retire is a deeply personal process and some factors may weigh more heavily than others. Perhaps you're considering West Virginia because you want to be close to family, or maybe you're looking for affordable options that are both near major cities and close to rivers and mountains. From the allure of breathtaking landscapes to the practical considerations of cost and community, we'll delve into the things that matter most. Today, we will outline how the Eastern Panhandle stacks up when it comes to matters like cost of living, taxes, healthcare facilities, climate, housing options, and recreation. Be sure to stick around for the end where we give you our top nine neighborhoods to target if you're looking for main level living in the Eastern Panhandle. Oh yeah, that list took some research. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> for this video, we are referencing the counties of Jefferson, Berkeley, and Morgan for the Eastern Panhandle. There are five other counties sometimes included in this category, but we're honing in just those three for today. We will start with a factor that's likely bringing many of you viewers here, overall cost of living. According to Living Cost, a source that aggregates data all over the world on cost of living, West Virginia is about 1.4 times less expensive than the average in the United States. It ranks 53rd out of 55 for the category of most expensive US states and territories. So it's across the board, one of the most affordable places to live in the United States. Now parts of the Eastern Panhandle include some of the more expensive parts of the state, but there is a wide range of prices as you head west to east, especially as you get into Morgan County. However, with that lower cost of living comes a slightly slower economy, longer drives to get to activities and less options overall. Based on their data, living costs rank the best cities to live in in West Virginia as follows. Wheeling at number one, Morgan Town number two, Charlestown, not Charleston, number three, Huntington, number four, and Charleston at number five. So Charlestown in the Eastern Panhandle makes the top three. Yep, and since one source is never enough for us, we also looked at Rent Cafe's cost of living calculators to see how West Virginia and the Eastern Panhandle stacked up. Their data comes from sources like the U.S. Census Bureau and the Cost of Living Index, published by the Council for Community and Economic Research. If we're just looking at cost of living of the major cities, Charleston was the least expensive compared to the national average of 14% cheaper. Morgantown is next at 11% cheaper. Martinsburg in the Eastern Panhandle is 7% cheaper than the national average, and Clarksburg is 4% cheaper. These studies pit Charlestown and Martinsburg as strong contenders for places to live if you're looking for low cost of living. Of course, your tax impact your cost of living as well, so we'll go over that here too. If you're looking to retire in West Virginia, you may want to look into the homestead exemption, where residents above 65 years of age who lived in their home for more than two years are eligible for certain real estate tax benefits. West Virginia has typically lower property and sales taxes to begin with. On top of this, Social Security retirement benefits typically taxed federally are not taxed in West Virginia. If you're relying on 401k or IRA income, there are deductions, but they're not quite as generous. There are also currently deductions available to taxpayers with government pension income. Whether it's because of lower costs across the board in housing, groceries, and taxes in some cases, the Eastern Panhandle is an attractive option for retirees looking to make their hard-earned income last as long as possible. Aside from cost of living, many retirees value quality healthcare facilities when choosing the best place to retire. They want to be sure they have access to healthcare when they need it. The Eastern Panhandle has options when it comes to healthcare, but it's not as robust as a more bustling city. The options are limited, so if you need a specific kind of medical care, you will want to be sure to do your research. The Berkeley Medical Center in Martinsburg is the major hospital in the Eastern Panhandle. There is also the Jefferson Medical Center in Ranson and the War Memorial Hospital in Berkeley Springs. Berkeley Medical Center and Jefferson Medical Center partnered with West Virginia University Medicine in 2005. Berkeley Medical Center was rated in the top 100 hospitals for gastrointestinal care in 2023. Meanwhile, War Memorial Hospital is run by Valley Health, which has a network of six different hospitals, including nearby Winchester Medical Center, just across the border in Virginia, which can be very close in certain parts of Martinsburg and even Jefferson County. Depending on which part of the Eastern Panhandle you live in, you may be a similar distance drive to both the Winchester Medical Center in Frederick County or even Inova Loudoun in Leesburg. Are you enjoying our breakdown? 
Now is the perfect time to like our video or subscribe. This really helps us grow and bring you more data-driven videos. As a reminder, we're tech savvy, but we're not relying on AI to give you this breakdown. We're digging into countless resources and double checking the facts whenever possible. You can always reach out to us at our email listed below with any feedback or comment on the video. We love hearing from our viewers. Now we might be a little biased living in the area, but we think the climate in the Eastern Panhandle is pretty awesome. You get all the seasons here. So there are months when you can curl up by the fire and watch the snow come down. And there are months when you can enjoy plenty of time outdoors gardening or going on hikes. Looking at Jefferson County, temperatures range here between lows in the 20s in January up to highs in the 80s in July. It's one of the warmest places in West Virginia. Berkeley County, the other major county in the Eastern Panhandle has similar ranges and both areas average at about 115 days of precipitation a year. Expect the most pleasant weather here in May, June, and September. So if you're unsure about the hot or cold seasons, best to visit during the other months to test those out. Bestplaces.net provides a comfort index for every location based on climate data. Out of 10, both Berkeley and Jefferson County rank at a 7.3, making them some of the most pleasant places to live overall in West Virginia on this scale. Meanwhile, Morgan County comes in right at 7.2, so it's a close contender as well. In terms of housing options, there is a wide range of price points, styles, and settings in the Eastern Panhandle. You can find a house by the river or on a mountain. There are properties with acreage as well as smaller homes with more manageable yards. There are homes built when the United States was still just 13 colonies, and there are brand new homes that have yet to be lived in. Single family homes in the Eastern Panhandle are averaging in price between 310,000 up to 350,000. The prices here for single family homes when looking specifically at homes with main level living was an average of 318,000. Jefferson County and Berkeley County are areas experiencing a lot of growth. If you invested in a home in these areas, you might end up with better than average appreciation in your home value over time. As more people move to these areas as well, more businesses and amenities are sometimes coming too. We're going to break down average home prices for single family homes with main level living by county in the Eastern Panhandle. Morgan County single family homes sold in the last year for a median price of 298,000 and in an average of 41 days. For this county and others as well, we are excluding lower price points where the homes needed major rehabilitation as these are typically not habitable. Total home sales in Morgan County were a little more than 150 homes, so much less inventory out there. Yep. Berkeley County single family homes for the last year had a median price of 309,000 and sold a little faster in an average of 25 days. The majority of homes selling in Berkeley County are found in Martinsburg, Inwood, Baker Heights, and Falling Waters. Total home sales here reached nearly 1,000. Of these sales, about 200 were newly built homes. Jefferson County single family homes in the last year sold for a median price of 360,000 in about 34 days on the market. Home sales were heavily focused on Charlestown and Ransom, but many homes sold in Harpers Ferry and Shepherdstown as well. Of the 351 sales of main level living homes here, nearly 70 were new construction properties. Your options range wildly here. If you'd like any recommendations based on your budget and your desires, just send us a message. If you're a few years away from a move, even better, because some of the most popular neighborhoods only have a few homes sell per year. The longer you're watching the market, the more prepared you will be to get a home you will love. So we already know that there are many affordable homes in the Eastern Panhandle. Taxes can be lower in the area, and the weather is pretty pleasant. This all sounds pretty good. Yep. But if you're going <laughs> to choose to retire here, what activities will you fill your days? Good question. Nature lovers, you have the upper hand here for certain. There are so many wonderful places to walk and hike along the river, near the mountains, in the Shenandoah Valley, and so on. There are parks and preserves with thousands of acres and so many opportunities for wildlife sightings. A few of our favorites include the War Memorial Park, Sam Michaels Park, and then of course, Harper's Ferry National Park. If you love golf, pickleball, or tennis, there are community centers and clubs with many opportunities to meet others and play. Send us a message if you'd like our list of places to play and tournaments. The eastern parts of the Eastern Panhandle are an easy drive or even train ride into DC. In DC, you can visit the National Mall, the monuments, go to the free Smithsonian museums, or one of the many festivals that happen throughout the year. You can also reach Baltimore for a day trip or an overnight visit to go to the wharf, go sailing, catch an Orioles game, even do a ghost tour. 
The aquarium is always a popular spot as well, I'd say. It sure is. In the Eastern Panhandle, you may enjoy going to a horse race or visiting the Hollywood Casino in Charlestown or catching a concert or comedian performance at this venue. Shepherd University hosts the Contemporary American Theater Festival every year and also puts on periodic performances. The Shenandoah University Conservatory puts on over 150 performances a year. Also, Shepherd University has a special lifelong learners program offered to members of the community looking to participate in active discussions and lectures. And there are also a number of great volunteer opportunities throughout the Eastern Panhandle as well that you can find based on your interests and skills. Just one example nearby, the Museum of the Shenandoah Valley has opportunities for gardening, leading tours, and even planning events. If you'd like our guide on what to do in the Eastern Panhandle for retirees, just send us a message. We have a list of all the things we mentioned and more to share. Now we've got our bonus content if you've made it to the end of the episode. Here are our top nine neighborhoods to target if you're looking for main level living in the Eastern Panhandle. The communities with some age restrictions are Sage Place Commons, Tuscawilla Hills, Berkeley Gardens, and Morgan Terrace. Communities that aren't age restricted but do have many main level living options include one of my personal favorites, Crest Creek, Locust Hills, Briar Run, Magnolia Springs, and Bon Air Village. If you'd like a home search set up for any of these neighborhoods or to see examples of the homes that have sold here in the last few years, send us a message. Deciding where you wanna live for retirement is a complex process. We're grateful you spent some time with us today learning about what the Eastern Panhandle has to offer. Next up, you are ready for the nine best senior living options in West Virginia to learn more about those bonus neighborhoods we just mentioned. Thanks for watching. See you next time.